Let's get started by creating our substance package. So here I'll go to File, New Substance, and I'm going to choose Empty. Now, this graph that we're getting ready to create is going to be a subgraph of our main material. This is going to be like a utility. So I'm not really worried so much about specific outputs at this time. So I'm going to choose Empty, and I'm going to add those outputs uh, a bit later. So for the graph name, uh, let's just call this uh, wood underscore pattern. And for the size mode, I'm going to leave this relative to parent. But I'll go ahead and change my resolution to 1024 by 1024. All right, so now that we have this set up, let's click OK. And this is going to create for us a new package. And we have this wood pattern graph. Now, whenever I create a material, I like to start with the base material node. So I'm going to hit the space bar. And I'm going to do a search for base. And here we have the base material. And so now that I have this here in my graph, I can just right click and drag and drop that right here into the 3D view. So I use this as like a modeling material. So let's set this up here. So mo uh, for the preset, I'm going to switch this to dielectric and uh, just increase kind of my roughness value here. So like I said, this is going to be like a modeling material. And we'll use this as we start to create our height normal information. All right, so uh, we'll just move this guy a little bit out of the way. And let's get started by creating our wood pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an anisotropic noise. So I'll hit my space bar. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not really going to use so much of this library, but I'm going to use this space bar window. And I'm just going to do uh, use the search field here to find the nodes I need. So here I'll start to type in anisotropic, and it's already filtered for me. And so what I want to do is grab the noise. So we'll left click to create this noise. So here for the attributes, I'm going to just take the rotate and set this to true. So now we have this vertical noise. Now it's a bit sharp, so what I'm going to do is uh, just blur this a bit. So I'll hit the space bar, and here you'll see that we have the blur node. And I'm going to use this one. Now if I do a search for blur, you'll notice that there's also this blur high quality grayscale. And uh, in this case, for what I want to do, I'm just going to use the regular blur. It's a little bit lower quality, but it's cheaper to compute. So we'll plug this in, and like I said, we're just going to slightly blur this here. All right, so here we have our anisotropic noise. The next step is to warp this. So here I'll hit the space bar and start to do a search for a warp. We'll grab our warp node, and we'll take the blur output, and we'll put that into the input of the warp. Now we need an intensity input to warp this by. Uh, so here's one thing you'll notice as I kind of zoom in. I don't see uh, what my input connections are labeled. So if that's happening for you, you just need to come over here to the top of the toolbar, click the information button, and then just make sure that the display connector name is enabled. So now you can see that uh, when I roll over these inputs or these outputs, I get a descriptive name here. So we need some type of gradient input to this. Now, what I'm going to use is a Perlin noise. So I'll hit the space bar, and I'll start to do a search for Perlin. And you'll see that we have three. I'm going to use this Perlin noise zoom. So now we've created this node, and let's connect this here into the gradient input. Double click the warp node so we view this here in our 2D view, and then we'll just simply lower the opacity down a bit. So this is what we have so far. All right, so let's select these guys, move them over uh, so we got some more room here to work, and uh, let's continue on. So the next thing we're going to do is grab another noise. So we'll hit the space bar here in search. I'm going to do a search for wood. And you'll notice that I have two of these options here for wood fibers, one and two. I'm going to grab the first one. So now I have this wood fibers. And I'm going to blend this with this warp node. So here I'll hit the space bar. I have my blend node. And uh, here, let's come up here to the warp. Let's plug this here into the foreground. Let's take our wood uh, fibers, plug this here into the background. Double click the blend node. So I'm viewing that here in my 2D view. And uh, then we'll just come over here to our blending node and set this to multiply. So it's pretty dark. So what I'm going to do is just start to drop my opacity here. And you know what? I think what I'm going to do is just kind of swap these inputs here. So let's just uh, change these inputs. So we're going to put our noise here on the top and our warp on the bottom. So again, I can start to just adjust my opacity here. Now, uh, like I said, it's still pretty dark. So I'm going to take this wood fiber, and I'm just going to select this connection line. And then I'm just going to click the Levels button here just to throw levels in between that so I can process uh, that value range. So now I'll just single click the Levels node so that I can get my histogram, and then just make a few adjustments here to this. So we'll adjust the gamma here. 
And so we'll double click, let's take a look. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to swap these inputs once more. So it, it, just after looking at this and kind of playing around with it, I can see, you know, I think it's going to work a little bit better now that I go this way. Because what I want to do is use this opacity slider to uh, kind of adjust my, uh, my wood grain pattern that I have here. And so let's go back over to uh, this levels and again, make a few adjustments here like this. So now I'm taking my output black and just raising that. And uh, again, just uh, increasing my contrast here by using the input value ranges. And here we go. All right, so this is going to give us kind of this wood pattern that we want here, kind of this grain. So now that we actually have some type of map that we're viewing, I'd like to, well, visualize that here in my 3D view as I work. And that's why, again, like I said, we have this base material that's going to stand in for like kind of like a, a modeling material, as I've been saying. So uh, let's do this. Let's create some normal information first. So uh, here I can just come up to the toolbar at the top and just click my normal node. Uh, I'm going to make sure that force alpha to 1 is enabled and take my output and just plug this guy into here. So now I have a normal map for the intensity value. I'm just going to really crank this up. Let's get this to a value of, say, 3. So now let's go back here to our base material. And I want to integrate this normal into my base material, which is being viewed here in my 3D view. So I'm just going to uh, scroll down here towards the section where we have user defined maps and I'm going to enable the roughness input. So here on the node, you can now see I have a normal input and we'll just plug this guy into here. And just like that, we start to see uh, this pattern that we've been working with visualizing that here in our 3D view, as well as the pattern that we have here in our 2D view. Now what's cool, again, with this base material node is I can come back and now I can just interactively adjust my roughness so I can see you know, how these highlights are being affected by the normal and so on. So like I said, let's just uh, set a value here for this roughness, something basic like this. If I want to, I could also test some color values here just using this base color parameter. But for now, like I said, we're just going to leave it here at this gray value. All right, so this is kind of like our first uh, level of this noise. And this is what we have, this kind of wood pattern. Now, I'd like to also start to uh, integrate some uh, crack lines into this. So let's create those now. So first thing I'm going to do, uh, in this case, over in my library, I'm going to use a couple of these uh, grunge maps. So here you can see under my noises, I'm just filtering for grunge. And I've got this grunge map 005. I'm going to use this guy. And uh, while I'm here, I am also going to take a look at this uh, grunge map 11. So we're going to use this guy too. So let's just left click and drag and drop that here into the graph so that we have this ready. So let's take a look at the grunge map 005 first. So this is giving me some lines here that are kind of vertical lines and they have a little bit of this wavy kind of, uh, you know, effect to them, which is going to be pretty cool for the type of cracks that I want to create. But we need to do some work to this. So uh, what I want to do first is try to isolate uh, these black lines. And, and so a good way to do that is just to use a high pass. So I'm going to do a search here for high, and you can see that I have this high pass grayscale node. So let's create this node here into my graph and make this connection here. Then we're going to come over to this radius setting, and I'm going to lower this uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty low, maybe something like 1.73. Uh, let's just try maybe something like this. Ah, OK, 1.29. We'll try this. So now that I have this uh, high pass grayscale, I'm now going to use another levels here. So again, I'll just do a quick search for levels and uh, plug this in. I'm going to use this levels now to process this value range that I have. So let's take the uh, input black and white, and let's just kind of move these in like this here. And here, we'll start to make a few adjustments. Now let me start to uh, take the uh, gamma value and just make some adjustment to this. And so now you can see, if I zoom in here on my 2D view, this is the type of shape that I'm trying to create here, or the, the range, the value range I'm trying to get. And so we're going to use this. So here's what we had before. This was the first noise. And here, after we high passed and did a levels, now we've kind of targeted uh, more of these kind of lines. And by doing that, we've kind of made these shapes. So you can see that we've got this line, we've got this highlight, and then this kind of gray, uh, kind of flat area. If I'm thinking about this, you know, in terms of like a height information, you can see that this is starting to give me some kind of like wood chip type pieces. And that's kind of the shapes that I'm going for in this. All right, so uh, now that we have this, what I'd like to do is take these lines and kind of stretch them vertically as well. And so to do that, I can use a 2D uh, transform node. So spacebar, I start to type transform. Here's the node. 
and we've created this. Let's take the output of our levels and plug that into the transform. So now what I'm going to do is just a non-uniform scale and vertically. Uh, so I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to grab this kind of middle control here uh, with the transform widget and just start to drag this up. And as I do that, you can see that I'm just scaling this noise vertically. So I'm going to maybe, uh, I don't know, let's just go with a value like this. So we've just scaled the noise. So here's what we had before, and here's our transform. OK, so this is all well and good, but we do have a problem now. If I hit the space bar over my 2D view to show the tiling, a transform operation such as this is going to break the tiling. So if I zoom in, you can see that we have this obvious break here in our tiling. However, we can fix that here in Substance Designer by using some of the tiling nodes. So with this node selected, I'll hit the space bar, and I'll start to type Make. And you can see that we have these Make It Tile options. What I want to use is this Make It Tile Photo, the grayscale variation. So we're going to just left click to create that node. Since I had the Transform node selected, it's already connected for me. So now, uh, double click, make sure I'm viewing this node here in my 2D view. If I zoom in pretty close, you can see here kind of this blurred area. This is kind of like the seam line that's being created by this node. Now, if I hit the space bar, you can see that uh, it's, it's pretty much fixed that tiling. It's not perfect, but it's, it's going to be good enough. Um, however, we can make a few adjustments to these parameters to kind of get rid of some of this blurry line. And a kind of a quick way to do that is by adjusting this mask warping H slider. So I'm going to start to just lower this down. And you can see it's just really just warping that line here. So that blur is being warped. And it's you know making it a little bit harder to see. Um, let's, let's just mess around with a few more of these values. Let's look at our precision here. So I'm just going to increase this. And you know it's kind of muddied up a little bit in here. But again, it's, it's good enough, I think, to kind of fool uh, the eye, since we do have a lot of distortion happening in this area anyways. So like I said, uh, let's just make a few adjustments here. Let's see what we can come up with. Here I'm adjusting the size. And I think I'll probably just go with something like this. So we had our transform. Uh, it broke the tiling. We used Make It Tile Photo to fix that tile, hit the space bar, and now we can see the tiling is fixed. All right, so now that we have these vertical lines in place, what I need to do is uh, try to implement some type of uh, a little bit of like a cross hatching or some vertical crack lines. And that's what we're going to use this grunge map uh, 11 for. So to actually use this, what I'm going to do is make a few changes here to the instance parameters of this node. So for the balance, set this up to you know kind of a high value. And let's take this cracks value. And if I kind of move this slider here towards the left, you can see that uh, it's creating more of these crack lines. And then I'm going to take the contrast and just in, uh, set this up pretty high. Now we kind of have these, these lines here, which is, which is going to help us. So what I want to do now is add another transform. So let's grab a transform 2D, and we'll make this connection here. And so what I'm going to do is just, again, do another kind of non-uniform scale to this. And this, like I said, this is going to break the tiling. But in this case, I, I really don't care. So I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to just scale this down like this. Uh, maybe try try scaling it this way, offset it just a little bit, just something like this. Now you'll notice that as I do this transformation, uh, we're skewing everything, but then it's, this is also starting to soften a bit, and that's because we have this mip map mode set to automatic. So if I set this to manual, it's basically going to disable the mip map, and now everything kind of sharpens up again. Uh, you may or may not want to do that. Uh, let, let's we can try it ourselves. So if we set it to manual and I start to increase these mip levels you can see that it starts to blur a bit. So what I'm going to do is set it to manual and then set this MIP level here to 1. So all this is doing is just it's it's the effect of kind of softening this up a little bit. So it's like adding a blur without having to add an extra node into that. So we just soften that just, just a little bit just using the MIP control. OK, so now uh, we have just this little bit of transformation. I'd like to add another transformation. However, instead of doing a copy of this grunge node, I'm just going to create another transformation and then just take that original noise and plug it into here. So now I'm going to get two different variations for this grunge, uh, but I'm still using only one grunge map. And that's just uh, kind of a good tip for optimization. One kind of grunge map here, and then we're going to get a variation of that just by using transforms. OK, so now that I have this, uh, what I'm going to do in this case, uh, hold down the Shift key, left click, and just scale this guy down here a little bit. Holding down the Shift key kind of constrains that to a uniform scale. And then I'm going to rotate this guy, uh, something like this here. 
And again, I can just reposition and offset it. So what I want to do is have uh, some of these lines more diagonal like this, some of these crack lines. All right, so we'll, we'll do something like this. And now uh, I'm going to use a blend. And we're going to blend these two guys together. So put this one in the foreground, put this guy in the background. We'll come over to the blending mode and set this to multiply. And so we'll zoom in and you can see that we're starting to get some, you know, some diagonal and then some horizontal, just somewhat of a kind of like a cross hatch type effect here. So there's our cracks. Let's move these guys over into here. And now we're going to blend this together. So now I'll hit the space bar again and we'll do a blend and we'll take the cracks here in the foreground and we'll take our vertical lines in the background and then once again, multiply. So now when we do that, uh, you can see that here we have kind of our wood chip areas and now these cracks are kind of coming in and creating some nice uh, more kind of wood pattern type effect here for us. Okay, so now that we have these lines, let's take a look at integrating this back to our original wood pattern that we have. So here's this wood pattern and uh, I'm gonna hit my space bar here and I'm gonna do a blend. And uh, here, let's take this, these lines here just so we keep everything nice and organized. And let's move these guys here towards the bottom. And let's take this blend. Uh, so we're gonna take our wood pattern and place that into the foreground and we're gonna take our uh, lines and place those into the background. So double click so we can view the blend in our 2D view. We'll come over to the blending mode and multiply. And so now this is kind of the wood pattern effect that we're getting. And of course we can start to adjust our opacity, which is uh, adjusting uh, you know, the value or the opacity of the first input pattern here, our foreground. So we'll do something like this. All right, so let's take a look at what we have so far here in our 3D view. So now that we have this shape, we can just take the output and plug that right here into our normal. So here's what we have. I'm um, just right now I'm holding down the shift and control and right mouse button to kind of rotate my HDR environment here just to try to check some of the different lighting angles. And so here's kind of like this wood pattern. Now there's one thing else I can do to this to kind of uh, make this a bit better. So in this case, we've just taken the lines that we had and we just multiplied those straight in. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab a bevel. So let's use the bevel node. Let's take this output and plug that here into the input. And for the distance, I'm gonna set this to a value of 0.1. Uh, it's a little bit too much, let's do 0 0.01. Okay, so now you can see uh, the type of shapes and things we're, we're creating here with this. Let's just increase our smoothing maybe a little bit. And uh, then let's take the height output and we'll plug that here into our background. Now we get just a, a softer, uh, more kind of three dimensional look here to this noise, to these cracks, which start to produce more of a wood pattern effect. So uh, again, here's what we had before previously. Here you can see that because of our lines, we're getting a lot of just kind of missing data or gaps here in our uh, values that we want to use. So here, if I take that height, and this is the one where I just beveled a little bit and we put this into the background. Now it just kind of fills in those areas and like I said, we get a little bit more of a kind of a 3D effect here to this wood. And so again, just kind of moving my light here in the viewport to see what this is doing. Uh, this is kind of the effect that we have. All right, so that's looking pretty decent so far. So now what I want to do is go back and try to make a few adjustments to some of these uh, values that I have. So uh, here, let's see what we have. Let's go back here to uh, perhaps where we started to create our vertical lines. And if I go all the way back here to uh, this high pass gradient node that I created, I can start to adjust my radius here. And what this is gonna do is start to kind of thicken up some of these crack lines that I have here. So I'm just gonna adjust this radius a little bit more. And now I'm getting just a little bit more uh, gaps in between these crack lines. And I think that's gonna work a little better. Also, let me try to look at maybe some of my uh, cracks that I have here that I have this rotation on. Uh, let's see, let's go back here to this blend so I can see what I'm doing and then single click here into this transform so that I have the, the actual transform widget itself. Now I have this rotated, so I'm hold down shift, left click, and uh, this is just going to scale uniformly. And so now I can see uh, that it's, well, it's making these lines a little bit uh, smaller. Let's, see, let's enlarge it a bit, see what this does for us. Okay, maybe that's it. Maybe I wanna make this just a little bit larger. 
And like I said, again, I can start to mess around with the kind of the rotation of this. Maybe go back to uh, this guy here and make some adjustments here as well. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good, so we'll go with that for now. Okay, so one last thing that I want to do with this. So I have this shape. I'm going to uh, hit my space bar here and start to type in emboss. I'm going to use this emboss node. So for the uh, input and the intensity input, I'm just going to use this same, uh, the same output. And then I'm going to make some changes. So we're going to lower this intensity value down pretty low. And uh, we'll take our highlight color and we'll move this down and then we'll start to just mess around with this rotation value here a bit. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and take this uh, emboss node and plug this here into our normal and see what we get. So that is just going to give us a little bit of extra kind of just detail uh, to, this, this, uh, to this wood texture we're trying to create. And so here, let's just mess around with uh, some of these values with our intensity and our rotation. So here we go. I'm going to use a value like that. And now you can see in here that all these little intricate shapes and uh, little like wood chip pieces that this is creating here for us. And again, we'll just move our light around. And you can see that uh, this is creating a pretty nice wood pattern for us here. And uh, this is the set of nodes that uh, we were able to use to do that. Um, OK, so now that we actually have uh, a texture here that's been created for us, I really don't need this normal and this base material mode anymore. So like I said, that was just kind of like my modeling material, just so I could see something happening here in my uh, 3D view. So uh, I'm going to delete those nodes. And now I'm going to actually have to create some outputs here. So what I'm going to do is just create an output. And uh, this one here, I'm going to take the emboss and just plug that straight into here. All right, and for the label, I'm just going to call this wood. Now, for the usage, I'm going to leave this blank. For the identifier, I'm just going to set this up myself. I'm just going to call this wood. All right, so now I'm just going to copy, so Control C, Control V, this output. And this time, I'm going to uh, take a look at just here my lines. So these are the wood lines that we have. So let's take the result from this bevel and just plug that here into the output. So we're going to have like our composited texture of our wood. Here we're going to have just our lines. Let's leave the usage blank identifier. Let's just type in lines. And then here we'll just type in, um, well, actually, let's call it this. Let's just call it cracks. And for the identifier, let's call it cracks. OK, so now we have these two outputs. And uh, lastly, uh, let me, uh, let's make an output just for this pattern here as well. So here, let's copy, paste that output once again. Let's take the output here from this blend. This is just going to be that wood pattern. And we'll just plug that into here. And let's come over to our label. And we'll just call this pattern. And an identifier, we'll call this pattern. So all I'm doing here, like I said originally with this node, is that we're creating a utility node here. And uh, this utility node is going to be used in our full material. So instead of having all these nodes all composite in one huge graph, I always like to kind of subgraph these things. And so what I'm doing here for these outputs is I'm giving myself some specific outputs that I can work with when it comes to compositing this graph into our main material graph. All right, so this is what we have. Now, also, if I wanted to have some type of parameters to make some adjustments, I could also do that here. Now, in this case, I, I don't. This is just going to create uh, this pattern for me. All right, so one last thing I want to do here, I'm going to come over to my graph. And for the attributes, I'm going to make sure that I set this output computation here to no. That means when I publish this as a substance and I use this in an application uh, that has a substance integration, this wood pattern graph is not going to become a material. Like I said, this is a utility uh, graph, and it's going to be used uh, in our main material graph. So now we have our wood pattern.